here is my assignment. This time it's Paris, but Commissioner, when you sent me here, I'll bet you didn't know that a couple of days later I'd be writing what could be my last report from, of all places, a cave. As you said, Bill Norton was in trouble. Using the name of Dave Mangus, he'd worked his way into an international espionage ring. But somehow they found out he was one of our agents and marked him for death. Right now, between me and Escape is a big, ugly gent. Every time I move, he shoots. His aim's not bad. And what's worse, he's got me bottled up, but good. It started when I went to the park, as you instructed me, and waited for the peanut vendor, Vittorio, the guy you said would lead me to Dave Mingus. For two days, I warmed a park bench waiting for Vittorio. Finally, he showed up. Bonjour, monsieur. Some nice, fresh roasted peanuts, perhaps? No peanuts. Are you Vittorio? Oui? I'm Steve Mitchell. May I see your credentials, Monsieur Mitchell? Ah. Then we did force the truth out of Vittorio. Vittorio? Who are you? Vittorio was a traitor to us. And now you have proved what we have suspected. Mengis is a traitor, too. What did you do with Mengis? Nothing yet. We cannot find him. But he will be in Paris at our next meeting. <laughs> So he got his knife, not me. My contact is gone. Bill is on the hot seat and doesn't know it, and the gendarmes are breathing down my neck, but I've got to find Bill before they do. I take it on the lamb and head for the last place they'd look for me, Inspector Murat's office in Paris. I tell him the whole story because I know he can take the heat off. It will not be easy, Steve, but I think I can do as you ask. Wanted, Henry Cassell former American seaman, for questioning by Inspector Murat, Prince Surti. Good. Now, until I find Bill Norton, to everybody but you, I'm Henry Cassell, a wanted man. We can put that to our advantage. Je ne comprends pas. Well, I'll fill you in, but first a couple of questions. What have you got on this phony peanut vendor? Oh. Jacques Fontaine, age, age 32. Five previous arrests, five convictions. Occupation, underground maintenance, section 402. Worked as a team with a man named Lurlek, the foreman. Anything on this partner, Lurlek? Nothing. Now, what is it all about? Well, you see, one of our agents, Bill Norton, posing as Dave Mangus, has worked his way into this international espionage ring that we're after. But now, they know who he really is. Bill Norton knows this? No. You see, he's staying out of sight someplace until they have a big meeting. Well, where out of sight? I have no idea. But I've got to get to him before they do. Oh. And it will help you to save Bill Norton to be known as a criminal. Why not? Of course, the stronger my case is, the better my chances are. So? So I want you to help me take a shot at Deschamps. Oh, no. No. Are you insane? Well, Deschamps is one of the most popular statesmen in all France. That's why I want to take a shot at him. You see, as an assassin on the run, they may welcome me with open arms. Murders, robberies, mob violence, all these things are so wonderful and simple. Steve, why don't you go to some country like Burma or Africa? I'm too easily upset for your type of operation. Take a pot shot at the Champ, indeed. Well, of course I won't hit him. But your boys are to give me a good hot chase. Only make sure they don't catch me. I'll duck into section 402 and then we'll see what's done with me. By whom? Lurlak, the foreman. I figure he's the only lead I've got. But you don't know if Lurlak is involved with the syndicate. I know that this phony peanut vendor was working with him. Now, I want to see if Lurlak will hide me or turn me in. But if he doesn't turn you in, then we got a bite. Maybe we've even caught a fish. Well, I'll stay out of sight until you send for me. You can tell Deschamps that at his convenience, I'll take that shot at him. The man is lying on bush to miss me slightly with a pistol. And you say no harm will come to me. But what if he's nervous? What if he's without sleep from an argument with his wife? Well, this man is not married, monsieur. Remember, monsieur de Champ, it is for France you're doing this. For France? Vive la France. Oh, monsieur Mura, at this moment, please, if you don't mind, I much prefer vive de Champ.
this is city property. What do you want? Hey, you gotta fight me. You making all that racket up there? Yeah, it's the police. They're right behind me. Get out of here. I want no trouble with the police. Oh, look, give me a break, will you? If I do, it'll be your arm. Go. Well, I suppose you'll get a medal for turning me over to him. That the chomps was a pretty big guy. You killed him? No, I missed. Look, give me a break. Let me run for it, will you? Go on, I'll help you. Have you seen a stranger in the last five minutes? Today it's been like all the rest, sir. There has been no one here. You men work in pair. Where's your partner? The poor fellow was stabbed and robbed. I have not hired a replacement. And you have not hidden this scoundrel? The hiding of fugitives has been the undoing of many men. Do you think I want such faith? Such a talk never entered my mind. Well, perhaps it went that way. Monsieur. Is safe. The police were quite angry. Thanks. What is your name? Henry Cassell. I'm Francois Lelay. Cassell, you interest me. Where do you come from? Well, I was a radio operator and merchant marine during the war. Haven't been able to get anything but odd jobs ever since. Do you still believe you're capable as a radio operator? Sure. Why? It is an odd coincidence. I've just lost my work partner due to an accident. How would you like the job? Well, job is a job. Come with me, Katzel. I'll show you something. There is another coincidence in our meeting, Cassero. I, too, am fascinated by radio. In fact, I have my own set and exchange messages with other amateurs. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not very good as a sender. I'm more of a tinker. So I need someone to send messages for me. All in fun, you understand. Sure, I understand. You mean you haven't been able to find a playmate to send you messages, huh? Unfortunately, the man I plan to use is leaving Paris very soon. There's little doubt he'll return. Let me show you my set. Hmm. I keep it here in the source for convenience. Like it? Ah, hey. With a gadget like that, you could beam a message across the world. Where's the rest of it? You have your foot on it. Hey. Send it. It's right to be on Billy's side if Billy wants to play. What kind of gibberish is this? Send it. Okay. It's right to be on Billy's side if Billy wants to play. Sounds like a nursery rhyme, but I could be setting up all the details for another Pearl Harbor. Still, I send it. I have to. I've got a hunch Lurlax checking me out for Bill Norton's job after they give him the big sleep. Staying with Lurlax, my only chance to save him. I think we'll be able to work together. Where are you staying? Huh? Under my hat. It's for sanctuary for a fugitive. I will make arrangements for you to stay at the Paris Hotel. Oh, thanks. I will need you very soon. Keep close contact with your landlady for messages. Right. Wait. I will go with you. It is time for lunch. Where we shall eat. Something the matter, Cassell? <laughs> Looks like we're going to eat kind of light today. Or some of us have our lunches brought to us. Your wife? This is Suzanne <laughs> Cassell. Hello. 
She fixes daily lunches for some of us maintenance men. She's a very good cook. Oh, that she is. She's sort of a mascot to us all. Suzanne, Cassell will be working with us. Perhaps you should get better acquainted. Oh, but of course. If Mr. Cassell doesn't mind. Oh, it'd be my pleasure. Oh, no, my pleasure. Uh, 441, Lamarck Drive. Apartment C at 8 o'clock. I won't be late. I think I'll go check in at that hotel. The most interesting man. Find out everything you can about him. I intend that he should replace Mingus tonight. Oh, Mingus is leaving? Mingus is about to come face to face with a fatal accident. But that is past. It is Cassell who mentions me now. You can handle him? Uh. You're an exciting man, Henry. Just think, I'll see you every day. <laughs> Angel, didn't your mother teach you that picking pockets is bad manners? I'm out of cigarettes. Have one, darling? Thank you. I haven't got a match. Oh, there's a lighter over there. Hmm. Are you jealous? I just asked you a question, darling. Are you jealous? Yeah, a little. You should be, you know. He's a very handsome man. Where is he? Out of town on a week's holiday. I don't know where he is. He wouldn't say. Any idea when the competition returns? He'll return soon, I imagine. Where does he live? I don't know, and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. You would no doubt go over and fight with him. <laughs> yep, to the death. There's really no reason for you to be upset over Mengus. You're attractive too, Henry. And to a woman who smokes, American cigarettes can be most uh, persuasive. <laughs> I bought a few cases from the soldier boys. Made a little money on the side. Oh? Then you can afford to take me to the Cafe Marquis tonight. They have a wonderful show. Uh, but Never I... argue with a woman, Henry. Lie to her, cheat on her, even kill her. But just don't argue. Century 99623. Ask for Pierre. I'll get my coat while you make the reservation. Hello? Hello, is this Pierre at the Café Marquis? This is the French Surte, Inspector Mira speaking. Hello, Pierre. This is Henry Cassell. I'm calling for Suzanne. Could we get a reservation at your place in about a half an hour? Oh, Mitchell. From all this drivel, I'm assuming that you are doing what you call uh, twice talk, double talk. You wish to see me tonight? Right. Your table will be waiting. But I hope the food is to your liking. Most of our customers complain. All right, Pierre, I understand. Well, we'll try again sometime. I'm sorry, honey. No luck. All filled up. Oh, but this is ridiculous. Pierre's never turned on Suzanne or her friends. Well, he's broken a precedent. Anyway, I'm bushed. Oh, but the evening has just started. And you're such good company. <laughs> Here, Angel. Try those for company. Good night, gorgeous. sure that Cassell showed an unusual interest in Mengus. Then he faked a phone call. And you're sure he did not talk to Pierre? It was not Pierre. I called back immediately. Pierre was not even there. My guess is Cassell called the police. Then we cannot take a chance. What are you going to do? These caves of Paris have spent over 500 years building a nasty reputation. I see no reason to change it now. How can you sit here so peacefully at a time like this? I'm not sitting peacefully. I'm thinking. Here we are, you and I, trying to break up an international spy ring working in the Paris underground. 
shooting at our dignitaries. And the pride of it all, you asking me the breakdown of a radio code in a matter of minutes. I'm sorry, Inspector. I can't help feeling tonight is a payoff. If we don't get the bill before they do, he's a cooked goose. Well, I can do no more than I have done. Our recording men are trying to break down your sentence. It's right to be on Billy's side if Billy wants to play. It is possible that this gibbery is in code, you know. In such case, what do you intend to do? I'll start worrying. Maybe I'm slipping. Want they? I'm sorry, Steve. This is not the report on the code. It's a check we ordered on Lurlick. He's one of the Legion of Lost Souls. The what? People whose lives no longer resemble the past they knew. France has been overrun with them since the end of the war. Nazi generals washing dishes in Paris restaurants under an assumed name. French traitor guised as the German merchants. Professional murderer, thieves, philanthropist, idealist, the good and the bad. A reshuffled society. All of which adds up to the fact that you've got nothing on Lurlack, huh? Nothing. Not even a bad habit. Inspector Mira checking on that code again. Oh, Inspector, I will ring you in a moment. I believe we have found the key. And it is a code. Maybe it'll give us a lead. Now, don't get your ropes up too soon, my friend. Well, all we need is a lead on when the meeting is. We already know where to go. Lurlack section. Well, where else? That's their center of communications. Recognize it? No. This is the map of the underground sewer and power system of Paris. Now, this is section 402, where you suspect the trouble will develop. This is section 16. This is 21, seven miles away. Oh, there are a lot of places, Inspector, that this firing could tap out their messages, whatever they are. But I still think it's 402. My point is this, Steve. My duty is to prevent murder. I'm talking right now about your murder. This will be the communication section. Yes? Inspector, we've broken that code. Go on. It's the old Melstick system that was developed and used somewhat generally by the Bolsheviks during the revolution. That sentence I gave you, what does it really mean? Very little. I quote, testing for tonight, unquote. Then that meeting is tonight. What are you doing? I'm going to call Suzanne. If Bill knows the meeting is tonight, he'll contact her as quick as he gets in the town. Have the whole staff stand by until notified further. Hello, Suzanne. Oh, Henry, I, I've been trying to reach you everywhere. You must come right over. Oh, what's up? I have news from Mengus. It regards you. Please, come right over. I'll be there in 20 minutes. What's the next move, Steve? Suzanne has got some word on Bill. I've got to get right over there. I'll send a couple of men in case you need help. No, no, don't do that. Like I told you, Bill doesn't know what's cooking. If he saw a policeman, he'd fade. We wouldn't find him until his body came floating up in the sand. Listen, Steve, I'm not going to stand by and see that you get yourself killed, even to help a friend. Look, trust me this time, will you, Inspector? I'll call you just as quick as I got something, okay? Okay. It is now 10 o'clock. I will wait two hours. Then, if I've not heard from you, I will send my men and come after you. Good. Oh, so why doesn't he come? He will be here. Come in. Hello, honey. Sorry to be late. We can cut the pretense, Mangus. Or should I say Bill Norton? Make yourself comfortable. What's this all about? You were not very clever. Neither was your partner. Look, what are you trying to give me? I have no partner. No? Open. Come in. Henry Cassell, Bill Norton. Glad to know you, Norton. Hi, Cassell. What's the idea of the gun? You two are very good operators. There was no sign of recognition which would give you away, Mitchell. Mitchell? Look, I told you, my name is Buzz Cassell. 
We have sources of information in many places. And one of them saw you going into Inspector Mirat's office. Lurlack herds Bill and me down where his stooges are waiting. Bill and I are living on borrowed time. I've got a hunch our credit's slipping, too. I remember an old saying. The British went in a tight spot. I was rave about their rights as Britishers. The French sing gaily to the end. And the Americans always keep hoping that the cavalry will come. Is that your hope, Mitchell? My only hope is that you drop dead. Mm. Hardly the attitude to take. But I'm about to reveal all the things you've worked so long to find out. See that light? It comes from a grating above. At midnight, one of our agents will pass and casually drop something which will have information printed inside. He's right, Steve. Remember when Dr. Madison disappeared from the Research Foundation? Yeah. Our pals here arranged it. He was tortured until he gave them top secret information. And you boys plan to relay it to your pals over this radio, huh? On the contrary, I intend to let you and your comrade in arms relay it for us. They're like playing cat and mouse. Now instead of getting Bill out, I've got to stick around and somehow grab Dr. Madison's formula. Then I get a glimmer. Bill, remember Annapolis and the maskers? Huh? Wasn't it in a joint like this that we were initiated? It was my job to douse the glim and take the juice out of the squawker while you stood by for a quick shuffle to start it? Yeah, I remember. What is this nonsense, juice shuffle? Tonight we pull pronto. Right. Wait! George! through the grating. Well, I guess that's the matter between Lerlech and me. City of Paris. <laughs> What's the shell for, Steve? This was in it. The formula, huh? Yeah, don't lose it. Inspector, you take care of your new guests. We'll take care of the formula. 